everyone doing. Uh, guys, thank you very much uh, for joining this important uh, call. I just wanted to start off uh, by, you know, thanking all of you. And um, I'm extremely impressed by everyone is uh, motivation, encouragement for everyone voting. I see all these different uh, uh, activities going on to push and get out to vote. So alhamdulillah, guys, thank you very much. I also want to say that there is no specific intelligence uh, that there's any one community, and we're talking in the context of Florida because we have people throughout Florida on this call, uh, that there's any direct threat to any mosque, uh, you know, here. However, uh, there is tremendous chatter. There's a lot of stuff going on in the law enforcement community. So I wanted to tell you guys directly what we're hearing. That way you guys can be aware as community leaders. Um, so you are aware and not to make an alarm or make you uh, be nervous or, or have any anxiety, but just so you can have a refresher in the back of your head saying, okay, the law enforcement is talking about this. So we should be aware. Okay. So uh, with this, election um, there has been a lot of social media chatter from far right military groups a lot um, they are uh, saying that um, you know if we don't win this we're going to go up in arms uh, we're gonna, they'll see they'll they'll uh, you know different quotes and everything that were being read uh, we're, we're going to go out in arms uh, they'll be held to pay um, and uh, the Muslims better watch out right so that's a very general statement Okay, so um, I want to make sure that everyone is aware and that, that that is happening, that chatter is happening. Uh, we are in individual capacities in our different law enforcement agencies watching those military type groups. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't do what we need to do to prepare as community leaders um, to make sure that uh, everyone is doing what we can at our own mosque. Um, specifically, uh, uh, you know, pre-election day and post-election, I'm going to talk about a couple different things uh, about just some basic recommendations. Uh, and also I have Omar Sal on here. He's going to be talking about some things as well. So we're going to just go back and forth. Um, okay, so uh, safety and security teams. I know uh, that uh, we've had extensive safety and security training down here in South Florida, uh, throughout the other parts of the state. Um, I know they have different mechanisms. I wanna share my screen. Sanat, can I share my screen? How, do you have me set up so I can share my screen? Yes, you can share your screen, please go ahead. All right, thank you. Okay, hold on. All right, you guys see you guys see that? Yeah. All right, I want to focus on this right here. This this one where it says Jama Eid, family nights and events. Um, I'm recommending to all of the uh, all of the the safety and security teams and all of the mosques here in Florida that um, we do some very basic steps and preemptive steps uh, just to make sure that we are safe. Uh, so uh, we know the election is on Tuesday. So, um, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen if anything's gonna happen. Uh, but I would uh, ask that you guys have a plan in place um, for, uh, from let's just say Tuesday on to be safe. Um, I don't think there has to be any, any extraordinary efforts put in, just uh, awareness raised, uh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, for the people that are at the mosque to be watching for any suspicious incidents, people, any direct threats on the phone, social media to your mosque, uh, but Friday, okay, so Friday, Juma. Um, it's extremely important that all of the leaders of the mosque meet with their safety teams um, and just have a quick briefing like I'm doing with you now um, and explaining uh, that uh, there is some chatter on social media with some very far right groups and I want to be very clear it doesn't matter if who wins or who loses our fear are these far right extremist groups that will either be empowered right uh, and feel emboldened if a certain candidate wins um, or if a certain candidate loses. So we just have to do our job. I don't want you to focus on uh, whoever wins or loses. I just want you to focus on the safety and security of our community. So if, on Juma, uh, definitely if, if you guys have the funds, the, the, the most 
the best thing for you guys to have is visible armed security uh, on your premises. Um, uh, you know, out front security, if they have a car, police car, security car, have that out front with the lights on. Uh, that way people know, and that's a good deterrent that uh, that we, we, we are here, we're secure and, and you know we're ready for anything. That's the best uh, solution. Uh, one of the best uh, uh, things to have done if you can do that. Next thing is safety and security team uh, posted. Um, I know of you I know a lot of mosques, especially here in South Florida have extensive safety and security teams. Uh, definitely time to meet before Juma, explain what's going on. Just tell people to be aware uh, for any suspicious activity, any suspicious people, you know, cars, things like that. Um, um, I'm not going to get into uh, you know the the different uh, crisis response team, safety and security team, panic. Um, uh, this is all stuff that we went through uh, very in very uh, much detail when we did the safety and security team training. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I, I cover those things. Those are very specific action items from all the MOS leaders. Uh, so just again to recap, uh, just raise awareness about uh, you know election day violence. Um, this uh, intelligence is general. It's a, it's not targeting any particular mosque or community um, in Florida. Other states have, but not in Florida. So I just want everyone to understand that that chatter is happening in law enforcement behind closed doors. Um, so now you know that that is happening behind closed doors. And I'll answer any questions if you have regarding that. Um, uh, so please make sure that uh, we're taking the appropriate steps to make sure our community is safe. Uh, so let me uh, stop sharing that screen. Okay. Uh, hold on. I think some people, there's some chatting going on here. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Um, all right. So, having said that, I want to. Um, uh, uh, oh, one thing. So uh, my recommendation is for at, at a minimum of two weeks. So if you're making uh, uh, recommendations for your uh, mosque and you know for having or if you if you don't normally have the armed security on premises at for a minimum of two weeks. Uh, that that would be a good investment, you know, for for the the Jamaz, uh, Friday for this Friday coming up and the next Friday, um, and that way we can kind of see what's going on. But that would be, uh, you know, good to add if you don't already have it. If you already have armed security, please uh, brief your armed security and explain to them that um, uh, what's going on, uh, you know, regarding the different far right mili uh, militia type groups. Um, and then just to have them be on extra aware. And the last thing is to make sure you brief your safety and security teams in your mosque, okay? Um, so I'm gonna uh, just pause and I'm gonna mute myself. I'm gonna bring Omar on. Um, he is gonna talk about some stuff about on election day uh, regarding at polling. And then also if there's any incidents or anything, you guys need to call 911. He's gonna give you some very specific things that he, he's recommending from uh, you guys to do. So I'll, uh, I'll turn that over to Omar and then Omar, when we're done we'll uh open it up for any questions and then uh we'll we'll uh we'll be done alhamdulillah so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it over thank you brother it's, it's great being here it's great seeing familiar faces alhamdulillah for the opportunity um bismillah rahman rahim i i i just came from the polls myself actually uh, about an hour ago alhamdulillah it wasn't uh, too incidental um and a lot well, I'm just going to tell you straight up who I voted for. I might be controversial, but I I wrote in my ballot, Nazar Hamzi. That's who I'm voting for, inshallah. Um, but uh, ju just to just to talk qu quickly on a, on, a, on a serious note, I was there at the polls um, in sunrise. There's a lot of people, and this is a very controversial election. So you might have seen videos of. Um, people fighting, I think over Miami Dade, I saw a video of people fighting. And I think why that happens is that there's a difference between poll watchers and unauthorized people. So it's, an, it's important at least for the community to know uh, who are the people authorized uh, to be at the polls. I'm, I'm just gonna talk briefly about who's authorized to be at the polls, uh, what your rights are when you're at the polls. And I, I know it's two days until the election but to the extent that we can, inshallah, spread this among the community. Care Florida has been doing it um, for the past couple of months, but of course, feel free to uh, 
have anybody contact us if they have any questions or if they need the resources. I'll give some examples of voter intimidation um, and then what to do and what and who to call uh, if somebody's being intimidated. And I don't anticipate uh, more than five minutes in Shalom. Maybe we can open up some questions. But the, the only people authorized in the the at the polls are official poll workers, and you'll see because they have ID uh, badges on them, election clerks, uh, the supervisor of elections, or the deputy, and you'll know who those are. They will, they will be having name tags. Uh, the only people who won't be having name tags are the voters themselves, who, who obviously are allowed um, people in the care of a voter. So somebody might not be a voter, but be taking care of somebody, they're also allowed. Uh, and then law enforcement. That's law enforcement that's approved by, by the uh, uh, election board. Uh, no person, political committee, or anyone else is allowed within 150 feet. So just to give you an idea of, of what is and, and what is allowed, because sometimes you'll see people who shouldn't be there, they're about 10 feet. And in fact, when I was in Sunrise, I saw somebody uh, too close, he wasn't approved, and they told him to stand back. Um, no photography is permitted in the polling room, but you are allowed to take a picture of your ballot, but try to refrain from uh, taking any photographs inside of the polling room. Uh, that's just generally inside. Um, your rights. I think the community should know this. I don't anticipate this being an issue. However, we are in Florida, which is a very heavily uh, contested state. It's, it's, a, it's, it's really gonna tip the scales. Um, so a lot of people are gonna be voting at the last minute, I think. So what's most important is if the polls close and you are in line, you still, you still have the right to vote. Um, and I'm gonna tell you what to do if you're not granted that right, but that's one thing that you have the right to do if you are in line while the polls uh, close. Um, if you happen to be voting and uh, you make a mistake, you can ask for a new ballot. You don't have to, you know, that's, invalidate your vote because if you make a mistake uh, don't try to correct it because that could invalidate your vote just request a new ballot um, and if the machines are down sometimes the machines are down ask for a paper ballot here's a very good resource um, I mean obviously we know that care Florida is here for the community uh, and I in terms of election uh, uh, education we've been working with two groups that's the ACLU they have the ACLU.org uh, they have great resources on election security, and a group called Our Vote, and it's 866 Our Vote. They actually have an Arabic uh, hotline, which is great. And it's, uh, and Brother Nazar, I'll send you this if you wanna circu circulate it later on, because I don't know how to share my screen, but in Arabic, it's 844-YALLA, Y-A-L-L-A-U-S. They have one in Spanish and, um, and Creole. Um, so let's talk about just some examples of voter intimidation because I don't know, I've, I've never seen it. I, I'm in Broward County, but every county is different. I heard in Miami Dade, they were, they, they, they were pickup trucks getting into fights you know, with, with uh, other people. But an example of a voter intimidation is people coming up to you while you're trying to vote, uh, asking you questions, about anything, you don't have to answer any questions. But if people start asking you questions about citizen, if if the uh, voting clerk starts aggressively asking questions about your citizenship or overly scrutinizing your ID, um, I'm just going to think of a scenario. Maybe uh, it's a lady in hijab, and the woman behind the the, the clerk behind the counter uh, doesn't have an understanding uh, uh, of Islam or she's xenophobic and starts uh, in in an intimidating manner, asking her, are you a citizen? Are you a citizen? When she's already shown her ID, that's gonna be intimidation. You contact three people, the poll clerk, uh, the, the supervisor at the poll, uh, the supervisor of elections, and Care Florida, uh, or an attorney. Um, the, the time when you contact the police is when, and I mean, this, is, this goes, goes the same for any situation, is when you're feeling assaulted or you're feeling threatened. But um, uh, Omar, can I, can, I, uh, can I ask you a question real fast? Yeah. 
Um, uh, one of our participants put a, put a good question. Um, uh, so I want to make sure it says, Assalamu alaikum, apart from security in the masjid, uh, which I spoke about in the beginning, uh, what about Muslims going to vote at polling stations, women in abayas, uh, scarves, head scarves, and shot things we're just talking about, uh, who can be clearly identified, things will be quite aggressive. So um, what, what advice can we give, um, you, can you give them uh, regarding that question? You, you, you definitely have to report it right there at the poll and contact your local supervisor of elections uh, and state supervisor of elections. The important thing about this is that it needs to be reported. Now, if now, there's a, a lady um, or sister, she's wearing her hijab, um, it's not the poll worker, but it's another person in the crowd. I mean, in Sunrise, huge crowds and everybody's, you know, and you got red shirts and blue shirts. The moment you're feeling uh, that somebody is getting up in your face or trying to intimidate you, you call the police immediately. But that is, it, it, it's important to also report it to the supervisor of elections and the polling supervisor, because they do take, the, they, they can, and, and I would, if somebody's in that situation, you can, you can give a um, sworn statement to that poll supervisor it's, it's how they're gonna get those uh, facts because these are numbers and we need to know who's experiencing it. That's, that's on the poll worker side, but if you feel like you're being assaulted, you definitely gotta contact the police. You know, CARE works hand in hand with law enforcement and making sure that uh, charges are pressed in the event that somebody feels intimidated. Um, it's it, it, not just that, but threatened or, or coerced to the point where you know, somebody is trying to interfere with your right. And that could be subjective, okay? For me, if somebody's blocking my car in his you know, black pickup truck, uh, but Nazar's in my passenger seat, I'm not gonna feel uh, as, as uh, you know, intimidated as a sister's by herself with her kids, and that's the same thing happens, okay? I'm not gonna call the police, but she would, I would advise that she calls the police. So you know, there's a difference there in user discretion, but I think if you feel, if you, feel intimidated or threatened, you contact the poll worker and contact the police. Omar, can you, uh, uh, I'm gonna answer this question from Francisco here, but um, can you make your, can you have the care team available on Tuesday for, um, uh, for our community here in Florida? Can you make sure that, uh, that uh, you guys, you talk to the legal team and that you guys have your phones uh, available for everyone? Uh, because I know, uh, that this may happen, um, you know, throughout the state, and uh, I, I know everyone knows how to call nine one one, but uh, uh, it's important Absolutely. that they have another resource, and that would be Care Florida. In this point, you know, at this point, no, it's it's a, it's a pleasure, it's an honor to to be there for the community and and give you know I'm going to give you my cell phone in a bit, but if, if you don't know our care um, our number, it's on the website. But our local number in Broward County is 954-272-0490. Um, are we all over Florida? Should I say Tampa? But here's here's my cell. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is, uh, is going to be on our social media, so it's going to go. Over. It's uh, it's live now, but um, it, there's other people from other parts of the state on the call as well because um, I've advertised it there. Um, Tampa is eight one three five one four. 1414 Orlando, I don't remember Orlando, but call, you know, here's my cell. It's 954-305-5454. If I don't answer, send me a text message uh, if it's an emergency and if you need immediate assistance. We will be there in Shotwa on Tuesday taking calls. Um, we can help you report uh, instances of voter intimidation and, and triple fold. You know, we'll, we'll make sure it's reported to the police election supervisor, your, your, the, the polling clerk, and make sure that it's documented. This is important. Um, th th we cannot fall uh, victim to voter intimidation and people not wanting to vote because of what we've already seen uh, candidates being intimidated. So inshallah, we, you know, we can't let that happen. And yes, to answer your question, I will be there myself again, it's 954. 3055454. Oftentimes I'm uh, you know on the phone or in a Zoom conference like this. So send me a text message if, if you're experiencing anything. We will and we will have folks all over the state monitoring inshallah. But um I'm and brother Nazar, I'm gonna send you just my 
sheet. I didn't okay. put it together in a like a thing, but you can. It has the numbers on it for uh, eight six six hour vote is a great organization. It's called you Power Vote. Type, it type it in the chat real quick so everyone on here can see it. Okay, actually, Why yeah. You that? While you're doing that, I'm gonna answer some questions because I got people asking me questions, okay? Yes. All right, so uh, Francisco, assalamu alaikum, bro. They asked me, uh, the police have any uh, uh, plan on having police presence? Okay, so this is a tricky um, uh, dilemma. So we have some, uh, some uh, members of the, the leadership, like commissioners and, and uh, supervisor of elections and things like that, that don't want police at the polling stations because they believe that will in intimidate voters. Um, you have some that do. Um, so I can't answer for everybody. I know that's a, not what you guys want to hear, Francisco. Um, however, I strongly suggest uh, that um, if you are active in the voting, I know MGage is very involved in uh, in going to making sure that there's no voter uh, intimidation, anything like that. Um, I know the police are being briefed because uh, we, we already have been regarding election day. Um, so uh, they, they are standing by and ready. Um, there are some counties in Florida that are having armed uh, um, uh, security. Some are having police, you know, police on, on site uh, during voting to make sure everything is safe. Um, so I hope that answers your question, uh, Francisco. I definitely would uh, reach out to your SOP, your supervisor, or SOE, so supervisor of elections, if you think they need it at your particular one. Um, Brother Naveed, yes, um, I will do that. I will take your suggestions um, and, and make sure that uh, our uh, we have a direct uh, line of communication. Thank you for sharing everything. Um, let's see here. Uh, that's a good suggestion, uh, Farouk. The sister uh, asked, uh, it's possible to, uh, if you guys can get groups of sisters to go together, anything, uh, group activity is always a lot safer. So that's a very good suggestion, Francisco, uh, regarding day election, if you're waiting that day. If you've waited that long, if you waited that long, why? You could have voted already. <laughs> uh, no, but that, that's a good suggestion. So thank you, Francisco. Um, One more maybe to, to add on. I mean, um, if, if you feel at all that you might be targeted for any other reason, try not to stand out even more. So I wouldn't wear a Trump or Biden shirt if per se you believe that you might that might uh, subject you to, to being be, being a target. Like red, um, blue. Okay, I think that's all the the questions. Um, there's yeah. one more question that is by um, uh, Sheikh Noor. Okay. Um, is it possible to send the recommendation of having police present for next to Jama to the South Florida Masajids? Um, yeah, Sheikh, that's a, that's exactly why I'm having this call. Um, I sent it out. Um, I, I, I will send a very direct message uh, and attach this video to all the leadership. Uh, this video, this Zoom invite was sent out to all the leadership across the state of Florida of every mosque. Um, so um, I will send those specific points out to all the leadership of the mosque uh, regarding the next two weeks. I, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, because I haven't seen some of our uh, brothers uh, join this meeting. Yeah, that's why I was kind of concerned. <laughs> Zakir, no, no problem. Thank you, Sheikh. I was going to mention quickly that it, I, it it's a good idea, and re building relationships with the local law enforcement is is a, a good idea in these in, in instances. Let me just give you an example uh, from experience of when there was a, a last year's Eid, uh, when there there was heightened um, reason to believe that there were going to be attacks. Uh, a lot of Masajid across the, the state had police presence. Some people paid for it, others didn't. Um, and then some people were asking me, Omar, we have to pay police. Why didn't this, you know, Masjid have to pay or free? You know, I, I don't know what everybody's situation is or how much uh, each person's going to cost. Some law enforcement, they have to charge because they're going to send somebody out there. Um, I think in cases where it's in, in there's might be cases of imminent danger, you know, that, uh, and Nazar, correct me if I'm wrong here, but they might send somebody out there uh, free of charge. Again, I don't uh, know, but what is important is there is no, uh, I, I, I don't think, you know, if you should definitely contact your local law enforcement, request it. It shouldn't be, I think, per deputy per hour is like a hundred dollars. Uh, and no, 
it's not that much. It's uh, it's like uh, 55 60 dollars, I think, an hour. Um, you know, for three hour minimum, but that 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 would fall on the supervisor of elections. That wouldn't fall on. Uh, any of the the mosque, you know, uh, we're talking about election day, but obviously for Juma, uh, they would, uh, they, the mosque would have to pay for that, that extra detail. So as a background for some, some of the board that might have de that developed relationship with your local police, it'll be easier to facilitate that security. That, that was the point I wanted to. Oh, I got you. Good. All right, um, guys, it's almost eight o'clock. Um, uh, Salam alaikum, Sadiq. I see you joined. Uh, the, for everyone that joined, uh, that joined late and didn't um, get everything that we were speaking about, uh, this video is being recorded. It'll be shared on Facebook, so please share it with everyone. Um, if there is there, are there any more questions uh, before we end uh, the the Zoom call? I'm on the chat. If anyone wants to uh, take their mic off and ask, or put it in the chat. Hello. Thank you, Brother Nazar, and thank you, Brother Omar, for a, a beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, Brother Naveed. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I, I wish everyone the best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect everybody. Again, this is not to raise uh, alarms. There's no specific intelligence. This is just a reminder bump. Um, and inshallah, if you guys have any questions, reach out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wish all you the best.